Alright, good day everyone. I thought we'd start this evening with something that I've not actually played before. Um, obviously worked with Realmworks for a fairly long time now, I'm getting quite comfortable with it, but uh, to be honest there's something I've never really touched with and that is timelines. Um, I, I find I generally run pre-made modules and my party go from module to module. Um, I, I find that's easy with, with my current work. Um, I don't have to do a lot of prep, I don't have to do a lot of creation, I really I really appreciate that, but uh, obviously there's people out there that uh, don't really want to go down that path, um, they want to create their own world um, and go into the very nitty gritty details. And for people like that I imagine timelines as going to be an incredible function, um, something that's going to absolutely make it uh, worthwhile or not for them. So we'll switch over to our Realmworks now. And uh, in front of us, you can see that we've got Roomworks on the World Amanac. Um, and as you can see here, if we actually uh, just collapse the entire hierarchy, so we can see everything neatly, uh, under events, I've created an era of upheaval. If everyone knows the D&D &D sort of story, you'll, you'll probably recognize that. Um, we're going from 1358 to 1385 as a, a time span. So, the way I've done that is under events I've clicked the plus symbol. I've gone time period. And that creates this, you know, I put my times, I put my name, and I put my details. I'm not gonna save this because I've already done it, but you know that that's how hard it is to sort of set up a time period. And I use that as a top level sort of category. Um, what I would probably do, 3885, is come up here and actually just change that. 1358 to 1385, and just set my prefix as that. Just so it really sets it out as that is the time period that that is from. Um, and then underneath that, what I've done is I've gone through and I've, I've set up the events that happened on those years. So I've just hit up a wiki here um, that had all this information already. Uh, you can see what's happened on each year. Um, I, you can see there's another sort of time span. This one, you know, went across more than one time span. Really sort of easy information to enter. And all you got to do is, you know, find your heading, right click, go create contain topic, and from there you can create an incident. Um, we can enter the event name, and I'll enter event name just so you can see what I'm doing. Wait for it to create, and there you go. You've got your event name. You know from here. This happened on this date. You've got your drop down. Happened in 1358. You know we're from 1358 to 1385. So if we right click on January takes us back so we can select a different month, we'll right click again, different year, I'm going to go through 85, let's say something happened in 84 in June on the 16th, there you go, there's your date. So it's pretty simple, you went to what happened, you save it, um, personally I've been entering a prefix, so here I would put in 1384 and click save. And the prefix basically comes through and puts that in front here so that it basically uh, sorts everything. If you're not sorting that way, you want to click up here on this little button here. Um, you want to sort topics by prefix or alphabetically, I prefer prefix, which is the way I set everything up. It's completely up to you. I just find this is a neater way. Uh, and as you can see, it goes from start to end. So we're going to delete that one because obviously there's absolutely no reason for me to keep that. There was no data in it. There we go, so that's gone. Um, and as you can see, there's different options. If you wanted to put in one of these options here, uh, create contain topic, you've got incidents, and you can drop down and go time periods. Just a, a different way to do it. Um, and obviously this is a really cool way to sort of set up your world and your environment. If you've got any sort of really big, huge historic events, you can display them in this way. Um, and you know, if you want your players to be able to access them using their player view, we just press a couple of buttons. Uh, and save it and done. You know, like that, that's now visible to them if they were using the player view. Now, that's simple. You can set up your major events, but you know, what if you want to show that your players have done something in, 
you know, maybe you're tracking every movement. Um, you know, that might be something that you're doing. Um, so what I've done here is on Tomb of Horrors, you can see I've actually got players entered. So I'm just going to delete that and show you how I did it. From any snippet within Realmworks, anything, um, I've got an entry here. Tomb of Horrors, we be goblins, let's say Tomb of Horrors. Alright, I've got this entry here, I'm going to edit that. I'm going to click this button here, I'm going to add section above this one. Um, and that's just preference, I'd, you know, why not have it at the top, instead of the bottom. Um, and you can add your, your sections, and you can add your sections below this one. Um, this is a topic one, so it's an overview. So I'm going to click on this one underneath and go add snippet above. And you see you got a lot more options here. Uh, we're going to do a color to date. Uh, we're going to call it Encountered. So my players encountered this dungeon on this day. Uh, 1384. Yeah, that makes about right. Let's say they entered on the 19th and they went in there. Alright, so on this date my players entered and they left naked. It's a, it's a very quick summary. If anyone wants to know what really happened to my players, you can check out my uh, my other blog posts on my team of horrors to find out <laughs> how my... Sorry, it still makes me laugh, but uh, how my players wish themselves back to the entire starter, entire campaign. I lost every single magic item and piece of value that I'd ever earned, ever. So, they, they happened on this day... <laughs> Poor suckers. Um, count on this day, and I can save that into this snippet, right? And that's now saved. Um, and that's under any snippet that I do this under. Now, the advantage here is that I can now come over here to my timeline and click this timeline button. And when you do that, you can see, boom, we've got a list of all of the timeline things that have occurred. Yeah, my only hate with this system, and I, I may be just... Uh, I've had a few glasses of wine, maybe I'm not seeing it, um, is how to sort this by date. Um, I'm seeing 1st of the 1st, 6th of the 19th, blah, blah, blah. I'm Australian, so maybe I'm just doing it wrong, I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem to be sorting in the, the correct date range as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, 1385, going back to 16, this uh, is just not sorting. But the point of the fact is that, you know, if you want to see when your players run Tomb of Horrors, you can see that quite quickly. If you want to see some massive big timeline events, you can see that quite quickly. Um, and if you were to set this up properly as you're going, you could really sort of configure your world and your environment to sort of have the date ranges that you're interested in seeing as you go. Um, and, you know, make this all visible to your players. Um, as simple as, you know, clicking the button in the encounter, blah blah, it becomes visible to them, um, and if they were using the player view, they would be able to see all that. This is the player view, by the way, I don't know if I've, I've actually ever really shown this to anyone. Um, let's have a look, let's see what it says, so if we go back to the World Almanac, they should only ever see what is visible to them, and you can see, I've made a few things visible. They can see their era. They can see some attempted coups. No, oh, sorry. I think I actually dropped it out there. Yeah, no, that's not working. So basically, the idea though is obviously if players were using the player view, they would see what they're meant to see and not what we're meant to be able to see on the GM. I've never messed around with player view. Um, my players don't really want to install an application. Um, we're hoping when web view comes out, that's going to change everything. But we'll see. But anyway, you enter a date, you enter a time, you put it against something, and obviously it appears in the timeline. It's that simple, and that's the, you know, that's all there is to it. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you can look at that and go, "Wow, that's incredible." Now. What this functionality doesn't have is the ability to make a custom calendar. Um, I'm going to talk about that because I, I've seen the angst in the uh, in the forums. I, I've seen Lone Wolf come out to defend themselves. 
custom calendars are in the works and I've heard that they're in the beta. I'm not personally a beta participant, but I've, I've heard there's people playing with it. Um, it's something that's coming. So, you, you know, your ability to create your own calendar system could be pretty absolutely massive for some people. Right now, all you've got access to is a Gregorian calendar. That may change in the future. I don't know. Personally, that's all I need. That's enough for me. Um, I'm way not even near um, detailed enough to go into uh, sort of creating calendar systems and weather systems and moon patterns and all that sort of thing. It just sounds like a lot of work to me. I like to copy off what already exists. But maybe this will be something that uh, you'll be very keen on using. Um, maybe it'll be something that will change your mind. Personally, as I keep saying, Realmworks is absolutely incredible. Um, and you just want to get in here and really try it just to see what I can do for you. So um, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you'd like to see any sort of other videos uh, showing out any sort of different functionality, please let me know and I'll be sure to make them for you. And uh, apart from that, have a good night.